Well, good morning and welcome back to City Line. With me is an organization that I chef's kiss. It is incredible. And this is the first time in Tacoma we have sat them down on the comfy couch to talk with us. The name of this organization will tell you exactly what it does. Uh, but first, I want to introduce J.R. Nobles. This man is so near and dear to my heart. You are the executive director of Friends of Children here in Tacoma. Welcome back to City Line. It's Thank been you. years yes. since you've been here. Yes. How many years has it been? Oh, at least, at least 10. 10 least years 10. that yeah. you haven't been back on. Yeah. I don't even know if we had the comfy couch 10 years ago. We might have had the yeah. orange chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This woman who needs no introduction, who is everybody's best friend and everybody's girl next door, we love her to death. <laughs> Maria Harlow, you are the development director mm -hmm. for Friends of Children, and they are lucky to have you. Thank you. It's good to see you, my dear. Really good to see you. All right, so if people are not scanning the paper, looking at LinkedIn, mm -hmm. what is Friends of Children and their mission, Mr. JR? Yes, yeah, so Friends of the Children is actually a 30-year-old organization started in Portland, Oregon. It's a national organization with chapters all across the United States. First chapter was in Portland, second chapter was in Seattle, and Tacoma is actually the 21st chapter. And wow. what Friends of the Children does is we try to um, impact generations, empower families, empower kiddos through the power of one-to-one -one in person mentoring. And so what we do is we start with kids between the ages of four and six years old. And we've taken mentoring out of the volunteer realm. So all of our volunteer, all of our mentors are paid professional mentors. They're all wow. salaried mentors and they work with kids. Like I said, beginning between the ages of four and six and we stay with them for 12 plus years. Okay, so let's recap because that was a mouthful. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah. So we are, this program is for children ages starting out four to yes. six. And you have taken mm -hmm. what I think is the guesswork. And also, um, I'm going to say it because I'll tell on myself, the um, unpredictableness of volunteering for a professional yeah. that already has their own family, maybe has a, a job, yeah. and then also is on a couple of boards. Yeah. Um, you have found them and you pay them yes. to mentor these children for 12 years. Yes. Holy yeah. macanoli. Yeah. I don't know of any other program that does that. I know of lots of volunteer programs and they're amazing. But this is above and beyond. So JR, how was the Tacoma chapter established? Was it established because the Portland chapter said, hey, we have one, you need to have one. Or was it established out of a great need? Yeah, so there are actually two other chapters in uh, Washington outside of Tacoma, uh, the Seattle chapter and then the Southwest Washington chapter. Uh, there, uh, the, the organization only goes where there's a significant need. And 17% of Washington's foster care population are here in Pierce County. And so there is a significant level of need ah. for kiddos that need that one-to-one -one in person mentoring. As I was saying before, since we've taken out the volunteer realm, um, our mentors spend four hours a week with every one of their kids, whether it's in class, um, or in community or mm -hmm. in their homes even with them. Wow. So I'm going to I'm going to jump around the table here on a question because it seems just your explanation is so exquisite. It feels like I need to ask Maria. Maria, you you are the development queen of the Pacific <laughs> Northwest. How how do you fund this paid model? I mean, I'm thinking it's 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 got to be incredible because no one's done it before, first off. And you guys have cracked the code. So how do you work that as a development director, looking at this thinking, I have to have money to pay these mentors? Right. So we were very fortunate in the early stages before the chapter was open to have a catalytic donation from the Medina Foundation of $500,000 over three years. So there were also many local funders who saw the results, saw the studies mm. that were done, saw the impact was real. And yeah. um, so 
with that seed money, we were able to open the chapter. Oh. And now my job is to continue to raise funds. And we do not have fee for service. Our, the, the youth we serve, we serve um, without a fee. And so our generous community is who continues to fund us. Wow. Um, and, you know, we're hoping as soon as Tacoma knows we're here that we'll bring on more um, supporters and partners well. to help our youth. They're, we're getting the word out right now as we speak. So tell us about the first few years as a new chapter opening and operating in COVID during a pandemic. I mean, and children are, you know, they are the X factor. They're slippery. <laughs> and then you've got COVID and they're staying home. How did that work, JR? So I started December 2019. Um, was the first employee, then began to hire my other staff, and then took on our first cohort of kiddos. And then all of a sudden it was March 2020 and there was a pandemic, COVID-19, something we'd never heard of before. And there was a stay at home mandate in place. Uh, and as a executive director of a new organization that had catalytic funding, community support, I am scrambling trying to figure out how am I going to pivot, shift, make this model that is supposed to be a one-to-one -one in person model work for this indefinite duration of time that we didn't know how long we would have this stay at home mandate in place. So we deployed technology into the kids' homes uh, because mm. we figured we could pivot to uh, virtual mentoring. I was, my challenge was, I thought the most difficult piece of that would be the relationship building between the friends and the kiddos because kids have short attention spans. They do. And how do you develop relationship virtually? Um, but to my surprise, those were the easiest relationships to develop. And uh, the proof of that was once we came out of COVID, the strength of the, the, strength of those relationships were demonstrated uh, the first time we were able to have an in-person event. We were at our clubhouse and the kids jumped out of their cars and oh. literally ran across the, the, the yard into the arms of their friends who they'd only ever had interaction with virtually. So that was a strong demonstration that what we didn't know could work actually worked. Yeah. Um, and so we were glad to see that we came through that pandemic and we're That's still here. That's a huge narrative. Yeah. And, and the proof in the pudding, mm -hmm. that is gold standard mm -hmm. for grants. And, and obviously, that I mean, when you have children run toward each other, yeah. gee, your program yeah. is working. So let's talk about who are some of your partners, JR. Yes, so we are fortunate to have some very, very wonderful partners. We have system partners like DCYF, Department mm -hmm. of Children, Youth and Family Services. Uh, and they help us, they help connect us to the families that, we, that we're looking to walk alongside and the families we're looking to serve. We have uh, other system partners like school districts, Tacoma Public Schools is an amazing partner at the district level, nice. at the building level, at the classroom level. Our friends are able to be in the classroom with the kids, sitting side by side with them in the lunchroom, on the playground. Uh, and then we also have community partners like Multicultural Child and Family Hope Center. Um, I love them. They're amazing, they're yes. Great. And Amara and Olive Crest, mm -hmm. other foster care and youth serving organizations in the community. Wow. So, Maria, how can our community support Friends of the Children? Do we support it by asking ourselves, can we be a mentor and applying? Do we support it by volunteering? Or do we support it by making a monthly donation or just a big check? Maria, <laughs> well, like, I'll take the big check. All of, all of the above, of yes. course. Everyone can come in and support at some level. Um, our youth need our community. It takes a village, right? Yes. They're the heroes, and we're just there to, to give them what they need so that they can continue on a path of, you know, on their journey of success. They are resilient children. Um, I mean, who wouldn't want to help them? Yeah, we have some volunteer opportunities as well, but... Um, coming to our events, telling your friends, bringing your friends, spreading the word. The families are already spreading the word amongst themselves that we serve, and right. we're getting referrals directly from families and teachers now. Wow. But um, the community might know of someone who needs a paid mentor and might want to apply oh, as I well. Like so, so nominate nominate some child in your neighborhood or something. Let us know. Let, let us know. So let's talk about Maria in this last 30 seconds or so. Um, the third annual summer concert fundraiser. 
Wherever you go, there's always fun. I've noticed that about you, Miss Maria. <laughs> so you have put together a party. Um, tell us when and where and how we get there and what is it going to be? So we're going to build on the success of the first two years. So this is a time for community to come together, learn more, support. And it's on August 31st. That's a Thursday evening at 6 p.m. And it's on the Alma rooftop oh. in Tacoma. So that is just a lovely space yes. for a summer party soiree. Yes. But this year we're featuring WEPA, a Latin jazz band. And if you know the word WEPA, it's excitement and joy. Okay. And that's exactly what we're celebrating. There have been so many successes with our kids, uh, more community members who are supporting us. And we just need to all support that and, and celebrate because, you know, we need celebrations in uh, our lives. Yeah. <laughs> we need celebrations, laughter, passion, hope, D, all the above. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've been showing the website across your beautiful face. Is that how we get tickets or find out more? Tickets will be available very soon. Okay. Very soon. Um, and yes, we'll have a link to the tickets. I love that. Okay, question for both of you. Let's fast forward 20 years. What's the one word people will associate with friends of children, JR? Wow, um, it's a big one. Uh, hope. There we go. Maria? Success. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I cannot thank either one of you enough for all that you do 24 seven. This is written across your hearts. You guys don't stop. I see the emails happening at two in the morning, making all of this come together for our children. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I wanna have you back on the couch sooner yeah. than later, all right. okay? Great. All right, thank it's a deal. You. Thank You're you. You're welcome. We have much more to come on City Line after just a little bit of musical chairs. Uh, Lori Davenport, which come a pro bono, will be here. You don't wanna miss that, we'll be right back.